All sevens today, Elite Club. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number seven. It's me, your boy Waddles. So a couple big things have happened this time. We updated the game. Minecraft 1.16.3 is out now. I went ahead and updated the world off camera because the update was literally tiny. Two bug fixes. Yeah, very, very small update. Also, I have Optifine back again, but Optifine for 1.16.3 isn't technically out yet, at least as of the recording of this video. I'm using a pre-release early access version. I'm thinking about maybe talking about Optifine in a future episode because I get a lot of questions about it. Big maybe though, let me know what you think down below. And hey, 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 you already know what I'm going to say about down below while you're going down there. Like button, thank you very much. Now, we're going to pick up right where we left off last episode. If you didn't catch the last one, you definitely should. Things are going to make a whole lot more sense if you saw it. At the end of the last episode, we were detailing the build, but I kind of ran out of time. I honestly didn't do as much detailing to this build right here as I would like to. This build right here, what is it? Well, you already know. You saw the last episode. Of course, it's our starter house. So, at the end of the last episode, we did detailing. We did the arch above the window, that planter box over there. We, of course, detailed this whole front section with the lanterns, the doors, everything, and ooh, don't even get me started about all of that mossy block up top. It looks good. Off camera, I did even more detailing to get us in a good spot for today's episode. First off, I added that wood bit up there. Usually, I like to put those wood accents, you know, with the fences, the fence gate, in front of white areas. I feel like it breaks the white up a little bit, but not too much. You can definitely still see the white, but the wood tone and texture is also brought into that area. Basically, I think it looks good. But that's not the only place where I put fences. I also put fences down low in this low part of our framing. This creates a vague arch shape. Uh, and let me stress vague. Very, very vague. But like, you can kind of see it in there. I think it looks good and it also adds more structure. Now speaking of wood, we have these wood buttons right here. These wood buttons are meant to be like nails or screws. They're holding our framework together. By the way, these losers over there, they're still there. I don't know what they're doing. They're wasting their life away on the sand hill. Ah, pathetic. Anyways, we've got the fences up high, the fences down low, and the buttons over here. I feel like like that adds a nice accent. It also makes our corners feel more complete, kind of. Finally, the final big thing, the least that I can think of right now that I did to the build, is right over here. On the tower, I made our windows a little bit more fancy by putting staircases on the bottom and on the top. This sort of creates a, a bit of a step inwards towards our glass panes. Now, speaking of glass panes, that's exactly where we're going to start today because we didn't put them in in the last episode. Glass panes are amazing for builds, for detailing builds, and just also for builds in general. Why? Well, because they're tiny. Their tininess adds another layer of depth to your build and depth as you know it's gigantic now while i wait for the glass to smelt up i'd like to talk a little bit more about the exterior of our build in my opinion the details are in a pretty good spot oh by the way i put another detail over there by this doorway i put staircases right there instead of solid blocks and then i put more stripped logs behind there makes a really interesting looking shape in there i like it but anyways the details on the outside are pretty much done i could add more and i probably will add just a few but they're mostly done but you know what's not done? The area around your build. The area around your build is just as important as the build itself. If I were to leave the grass and the flowers alone, just like that, and this lake like oddly right there in front of our front door, it would look incomplete always. Even if I finished everything, the inside outside, it would look weird. You need to detail the area around your build too, and we're definitely going to do that today, probably near the end of the episode. Just wanted to get that one out of the way before we started talking about interiors. Now, how's the glass doing? Ooh, it's doing good. Perfect. This is the first glass of our world. Big glass moment right here. Big glass moment with black stained glass more specifically, because this stuff is amazing. You already know this is the glass that we're going to use on our build today, because I love it. It looks so good, and then with Optifine, ooh, it gets even better. If you've never seen Optifine glass, sorry to say, but your life hasn't been good until you've seen this clean connected glass texture. My favorite thing in the world. Now, uh, really quick, I'd like to just kind of actually pull this out and put even more glass panes in here. I think a wider window would probably look good, and I think we can pull it off. We could either put more oak in here, or we could just do a strip spruce beam. Not too sure quite yet. We'll figure it out in a minute when we're actually working on the interior. Uh, but I'm going to actually need a little bit more black stained glass because we need more for there, and we need more for right there in that window too. 
Being honest, I'm still not 100% sold on this window. I still might change it later on, but at least for now we can get the glass panes in. So if we don't change it, then it's already complete. So glass panes in. Interior looking very, very weird. It's time to make the interior actually livable, actually good looking. We'll start by placing some torches around the outside here because this place is going to be covered. We're actually going to make the floor one block below the window. So basically right there. Now, what are we going to make the floor out of? Ooh, good question. Well, I'll tell you what we're definitely not going to use. Oak planks. You should never make the floor of your build the same block as your wall. Usually, it, like 90% of the time, that should be the case. Maybe 95 or 99 even. Don't make it the same block. So, we used oak on the wall, which means that's off of the books. We used spruce on the ceiling, kind of. You won't be able to see it eventually, so maybe that's still an option. Uh, that leaves us with birch or dark oak. I'm kind of thinking birch for now, and then we can come back in later and change it. This will at least let us get started. When working on the interior of any build, big or small, I always, always, always recommend starting with the floor. The floor quite literally provides the perfect base for everything. If you can even get a temporary floor inside of your build, you'll be able to have a better picture and literally see what your build is going to look like. We're gonna go ahead and put this birch floor in everywhere. We definitely won't be leaving this birch floor everywhere because uh, that would be boring. Here we go, we have a birch floor in here. Now, interesting thing, the door, it's a little bit lower, which means we're gonna need to have a step up no matter what. We could start by doing that right there and then we could have our step up on the next block. So something just like this, whether it be with slabs or staircases, I'm not too sure quite yet. Now, uh, we have a pretty small build. This build is definitely compact, which means it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to work with. We have a couple options here. Now that our floor is mostly in, we'll talk about that area in a second, uh, we need to start planning out our rooms. So, uh, the build is small, which means we don't have a lot of room for rooms. A small build is definitely not a problem. This is a starter house after all. Inside of a starter house, we really need just a couple things. We need room for some storage, room for some sort of smelting area so we can cook food, and somewhere for a bed. We could easily fit all of those things inside of this build. Let's start planning our rooms. After you get your floor in, the next step is planning your interior rooms. You can plan your interior rooms with some sort of temporary block. You should probably use something that stands out so you can really see what you're thinking. So, we'll use dirt. First off, I'm thinking that we'll have a little bit of an entry hallway. I think this will look nice, but because this build is so small, this entry hallway will have to be small. I'm thinking the hallway will literally be this size. It'll be pretty small. Then we step out into the build. Now, I'm thinking that I want to have a kitchen by these windows right here. I think that would be kind of nice. And hey, Enderman out there, very dangerous. You can look at them through the glass, though. They won't get mad at you. Anyways, though, kitchen in this area over here. I'm thinking that maybe we'll have a wall go all the way back just like that. So a very small square kitchen. That should be nice. More than enough room for a kitchen. That leaves us with this area over here. Now, uh, this gets a little bit more tricky. So we have a room over here. We'll do that for now. We'll probably have it more open, but that's fine. Then maybe we could go over here and honestly have another room right there. So then we have this big L-shaped room, which definitely isn't a problem. I'm thinking that we could maybe put like a bed right here and make it look like a couch so we can easily get in here and sleep. And then maybe we could vote a proper bedroom somewhere else. Now this area, I want this build to be able to go up and down. This area, I think I'm saving it for some sort of staircase, maybe. Either way though, I know that the floor is going to be a lot lower in here. It's gonna be all the way down there so we can actually use these windows, which means we're gonna probably need to have some sort of staircase thing going on in here. So boom, floor plan, pretty easy. That's kind of what I'm thinking. When you're setting up your floor plan, don't think about it too much. You could definitely change it later on. Now let's start talking about the actual wall blocks. So first off, this entryway. I have these stripped logs right there. I definitely want these stripped logs to stay there. They also kind of have to because I have a staircase right there now. So let's continue these up to make those look good. Then on the ceiling in here, we have this weird area. We could probably use spruce staircases in here to round that out and provide an interesting looking shape in there. Then we could maybe actually just pull those walls out. What about these ones? Hmm, they can kind of be pulled out too. So these ones will pull out and maybe put like spruce slabs in there. That might be a better look. Now this area could probably just fill in all the way, at least for now, that's fine. Now the kitchen wall, what do we wanna use as the kitchen wall? I'm kind of honestly leaning towards spruce. I feel like spruce would look really nice in here. So what if we put spruce right there, then had a two wide door to get into the kitchen, then had another spruce pillar right there, then maybe over here, Instead of just all spruce logs, we could do something a little bit more interesting. Maybe we'll put a spruce corner right there, and then in between these spruce logs, we could maybe... Well, we could use wall blocks. They would connect and look normal now. Or we could try and come in here with a color. A color might be kind of cool. It'll be trickier to work with, 
but if we can pull it off, I think it would look sweet. This might not work very well, but we have a lot of honeycombs. Pretty much, yeah, more than enough, I think, maybe. It'll, it'll be tight. What if we used honeycomb blocks on this wall? Is this weird looking? Definitely, 100% weird looking, but do I like it? Also, yes, I do like the honeycomb block wall. Oh boy, what if we did this, okay? Honeycomb blocks in there, and then on the bottom to make it feel more normal, we did like trap doors, maybe? Big maybe on that one. <laughs> Big maybe. That might be a little too close for uh, for this to actually work. Would be interesting though. The color would be nice. I'd love to bring some actual color into this build. Now really quick, let's talk about the kitchen floor. It's cool. It, it's good, but I want it to be a little bit different. I'm thinking that the kitchen floor should have some sort of checkered pattern. Maybe what we could do to make this kitchen feel really nice and really fancy, big maybe here, is actually black and white checkered flooring. I feel like black and white checkered flooring looks so cool, and inside of a kitchen, I, I personally feel like it fits the vibe like perfectly. So maybe a little bit of this stuff, and we could give it a shot. I don't know if it's gonna work. It might not work out, but let's give it a shot. So concrete, let's talk about concrete really quick. I love the block, but I also, not gonna lie, kind of don't like the block. Solid hardened concrete, the stuff that we're making right now with water, is really, really flat looking, as you're gonna see in a second. The flatness, in my opinion, sort of makes it hard to work with. Now to turn concrete powder into hardened concrete, it needs to touch water. Early game, or late game if you want, you could just drop it into water like I did, do a tower, and then just mine out the bottom block. The stuff will fall like sand and turn into hardened concrete. That works. Uh, or you could do it in some sort of fancy way with some sort of factory, which I think I would definitely like to take out in this world. I've never done one before, but they're really not that hard to make. So, the kitchen. Let's go ahead and take care of this. The kitchen floor should definitely continue all the way out to the doorway, and then it'll just sort of stop. We'll work on blending it in uh, a little later on, but the floor. I think checkers would look so cool. And you have to keep in mind that some of these checkers will actually end up being covered over. We're gonna have like a smoker in here, you know, useful things. We won't just have an empty kitchen, so yeah, it'll look a little bit less intense once we have things filled in. But a checkered floor in the kitchen, oh yeah, for sure, definitely. I think that looks sweet. Now this wall, still really standing out. We're gonna just leave it for now and just kind of feel it out. Maybe it'll work later. I'm thinking that we could frame this in like that. I think that looks good. Now, uh, from this backside, if we do end up leaving that wall, we're gonna need to cover it up somehow, for sure. Not a doubt about it. Anyways, this back wall over here, I'd like to switch it up a little bit. This is what I think we could do. We could maybe move it forward a little bit more, right here, and then have it go up with these logs. But we're not gonna leave them as actual logs. I feel like that would look way too similar to that room right there. Instead, what we're gonna do is grab our ax, because we're gonna need that to strip these things. Boom. We strip them right there, they blend right into that wall. Now, one more thing, I would definitely like them to be over the doorway as well this time, so we're gonna do this. Oak wood right there, place it right there, and then we're gonna strip that oak wood. That way we don't have that log texture on the bottom. It looks like a solid, complete, finished unit. Right there, boom, and then we take that out. Now we have a proper doorway going into our stairwell. This will be good. It's very cramped, but I think it'll work. Back to our entryway. Let's have this continue all the way down, and then same thing over here. We'll get a few more planks and have that go all the way down into the ground. Definitely not gonna wanna have wood here, though. The wood is a little weird. I think we should have something that's a little bit more entryway-like. I mean, think about it. In a real-world house, in your entryway, you might have wood floor. It's definitely good for that. Or maybe you don't have wood floor. Maybe you have something more like tile, you know, something really, really durable. I'm thinking we're gonna have some sort of tile in the entryway but by tile because we don't really have tile in minecraft or even a block that looks like tile right now we're just gonna do stone stone is gonna look good right there the biggest single tip to minecraft interiors that i could give you is thinking about real world builds and real world houses if you think about your real world house i guarantee that you'll get ideas for your minecraft house so here we go we have our entry with stone fancy then we walk up into this wood floor room definitely want to change this a little too yellow and woody in here then we have the kitchen over here definitely need to change that and then over here we have some sort of extra room not too sure what it'll be quite yet so I want to check this out. This might not work at all. This might be way, way, way too intense for our build, but dark oak flooring. What do we think about dark oak flooring as the main flooring for our house? It might be really, really dark, but it also might look nice. It might make it feel a little bit more like classy and, and cool. I'm honestly thinking that it might work in here. 
Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna swap this all for dark oak floor. Big brain floor tip. So right now we have a bunch of plank flooring. It looks good, but it could look better. To make it look better, place logs down, strip the logs, and boom. Doesn't really work with dark oak wood, though. <laughs> Forgot about that. Uh, with dark oak wood, we need to use spruce logs, which I am out of. And I'm trying to grow a new tree over there, so gonna have to wait on that. Um, yeah, usually it works. With, like, every other wood type, it works really, really well. But not with dark oak, because the stripped version of dark oak kind of matches spruce a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. So I liked the vision with the honeycomb there. I did. I liked it a lot. But it doesn't work. Just doesn't work. When working on the interior of a build, you have to be open to change if you put something down and it doesn't work uh don't feel bad about abandoning it sometimes you just need to abandon it to actually make your build move forward and look good now uh, with that being said i kind of don't have much of a clue as to what i could put in there instead all right hear me out here this is a little bit more abstract it's a little bit more weird but what if we were to basically just continue the wall like this but we leave a window right there instead so we go up and just temporarily you know kind of fill it in but yeah we put a window in that wall you know like sometimes in like houses they have like that random like weird window like kind of going through to a different room and you're like why is that window there yeah maybe we do one of those windows maybe i don't know i'm not too sure but if we did we could do this right there and make that look good and then it kind of keeps things open in here in the kitchen uh and it's weird and it's custom but i feel like it's kind of cool now let's go ahead and tackle the ceiling then we'll actually put things inside of this shell the ceiling in here could maybe be brought all the way up to this layer right here and actually uh maybe well mm, if we bring it up to there can i pull this out kind of i kind of can can i deal with that one block being randomly visible from an odd obscure angle that i'm never gonna look at yes i can i can definitely deal with that you know what we're gonna do we're gonna put the honeycomb blocks in the ceiling because i want to use them i made them all right and they're going into the build i don't care what anyone says they're going in here and they're gonna look great look at it boom these blocks work very good on ceilings in my opinion because ceilings are high up and there's kind of like more of an accent you know I feel like it looks really good. I love it. Anyways, we can go ahead and finish this wall up right here really quick. This is what I'm thinking in here. We'll actually have these spruce beams go all the way up to the ceiling and we'll strip them. So it'll be just like the outside wall. I think that'll look nice over here. Then, because why not, we could actually try and have them continue straight across there. I feel like that looks good. So we'll continue that over here and have that go right into that wall right there. That's fine. Looks good. All stripped. Then finally, maybe in here we could just do cobblestone. Cobblestone slabs on the top half of the block. I feel like that would look really good, and I definitely have the materials that I would need for it. But you know what? We can spice it up even more with mossy cobblestone. So in here, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, mossy cobblestone and cobblestone slabs all over the place. This wall will continue up, and then over here, we'll do the same thing with this wall, continue it up, so we don't have any kind of weird gaps or anything like that. Wouldn't want any of those in here. Using these blocks for the ceiling in here is both easy and cheap. It also looks pretty good in my opinion. Boom, that's finished now. Which leaves us with this interesting room over here. So, first things first, definitely want a different floor in this room. I'm thinking actually, maybe, big maybe, stone brick floors in there. I think stone bricks would look really, really good. So let's try this out. First stone bricks of the world, mossy stone bricks as well because we can, and then turn them all into slabs so we can conserve blocks. Maybe, hopefully that'll be enough. Literally, really. All right, all right, it's almost enough. We are one block short, all right. Thanks. <laughs> or wait, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not that big a video, boom, right here, easy. Okay, so that works, that looks really good. Over here, I think we could finish this one off by just going all the way up with these slabs, that'll probably look good, and then we have a random staircase in there that we definitely wanna swap out, I think if possible, which definitely possible, for more cobblestone. Now, I've done some thinking. I think what we could do, if we needed to go up and down, is put like a ladder right there, we have room for it, because then we could set up an enchanting setup in this area right here, it's the perfect size for it after all which would be really really cool so that's what i'm thinking we'll have an enchanting setup over there and then room for a ladder up and down right in there which means now we just want to figure out the floor for that top area which i'm thinking is dark oak again i think that would look really good we'll put it right here so we have room for the windows to go all the way up and then this room up here we'll probably leave it alone for the most part for now but what we could use this space for is actually storage this area in here it'll be small for sure but it would definitely be able to house our storage at least for the beginning part of the game at least i would think we could put like a lot of chests in there and over here should probably be good it'll be tight but it'll work 
So there we go. We have the layout of our house done other than the basement, which we will add later on if we have to. I don't even know if we'll have to. Now let's do the details room by room. Let's start with the entryway because, of course, that's the start of the house. Of course, for the entryway, we're going to want to have better doors. Better doors? Easy. Check this out. Pressure plate, pressure plate right there. Step on the pressure plates. Doors close. That is perfect. That's a lot better than having to turn around every single time and close the doors. We never finished this up, so staircase, staircase, just like that. And then, uh, maybe... We we could actually come in with more oak stairs just like that boom we have a cool little like kind of tear down and a little bit of striping going on i think that looks pretty sweet now every entryway of course needs a coat hook in minecraft we don't have coat hooks but we have tripwire hooks which are great for coat hooks so coat hook coat hook boom if we had coats we would put them right there now how about a functional coat hook but instead of a coat hook it's a closet this time closets are nice we could put a closet right here armor stand right there for our armor and then to make it into an actual closet we could do Trap door, right, uh, no, 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 trap door right there, boom, trap door right on top of it, close it, and then finally, another trap door right there. Now we have a small closet right there. Now, honestly, the armor stand does blend in because we have the oak wall on the back and the oak armor stand, but once we get stuff on it, it'll actually make sense. You'll be able to tell what it is. So entryway, I would say check. That's a pretty solid entryway. We don't need much else here. Ah, the kitchen. Kitchens are always fun. Okay, so let's start off with a counter block. The counter block is that right there. Then let's get a smoker. Smokers are the way to cook food in Minecraft, hands down. So smoker right there. That's our cooking station. Now, over here, just to keep the function of our house good, let's put a normal furnace and our blast furnace right there. Does it make a lot of sense to do all of our ore smelting in the kitchen? No, it makes no sense at all, but we're working with a small space here, so it'll be fine. Finally, every single kitchen needs a sink. To make a sink, cauldron right there, bucket of water inside of the sink. Now, we have a couple options for the faucet. We could do a lever, or we could do another tripwire hook. I'm thinking tripwire hook. I like these a little bit better for faucets. There we go. We have a sink right there. We have a cooking area. We have room for something on the counter. Then, finally, we have a furnace and a blast furnace. That's cool. Those don't really belong here, but it is what it is. Now, I think we can make this kitchen come a little bit more alive by opening the window. So, boom. There we go. We take those out. Now, the window's open. We could add more detail to the windows by taking these out and these out right there. Then, if we grab some oak staircases, we could do oak staircase right there oak staircase there oak staircase over here and finally oak staircase right there a little bit more detail going on now i think that looks a little bit better it looks good and all but what if we wanted privacy well not a big deal because we have lots and lots of wool wool is amazing for detailing because you can turn wool into banners and then you can put banners as curtains right next to your windows little problem here though with the kitchen faucet thing so let's go ahead and just take that out and put it over there not a big deal a little weird for sure definitely uh but it's fine it it works uh now we have banners in here so we could close the curtains if we wanted to we're gonna go ahead and leave this window closed because i don't want my windows too open too open not good it looks too friendly finally for the kitchen we should probably have at least one double chest for storage because of course we want this kitchen to not only be about looks but also about functions so we can put a double chest for storage uh that's tricky we could put it hmm, that's very tricky you know what we could build a shelf and put it right there that would be an okay spot for a chest so here's how we build a shelf for that chest we don't want it floating we could do a uh, trap door trap door and then maybe can we fit it in here is it gonna work um no it's not because it's the banner hmm. well we could just do it like that that's fine that works for a shelf the chest is definitely held in there why not because i have these extra trap doors we'll just put them on top there we go boom shelves even better now now when doing a house you definitely don't want to forget about lighting you don't want mobs to spawn so what we're gonna do is grab a lantern and put it on uh well we could hang it Ooh, you know what we're gonna hang it we need a chain to no even better we need two chains we're gonna have this lantern hang down right here in front of the window boom kitchen nice and bright now no spawns happening in there we might want to double check the entryway but it's fine because now we need to work on this whole space right here first things first we need a spot to sleep bed come with me red flower come with me never mind red flower go on the ground because we already have bed number two usually i would like to put end pieces on my couches but i don't have room so right there a bed right there a bed now we have a big long couch right there now ideally i would love to open this window up even more that would look sweet uh so we'd have like a really long window and a couch uh, by the window but it doesn't really work so we're not gonna worry about it we'll just put it back it's fine so this will be where we sleep. We'll set our spawn right there, so just in case anything bad happens, but boom, that's where we sleep. Perfect. We need a crafting area. Let's put our crafting table right there, nice and central. We'll be able to reach this crafting table from the kitchen, from this area. Yeah, again, nice and central. 
Now, remember that whole shelf stuff that I was just talking about? Of course you do, because we were just talking about it. Well, what if we put another shelf right here, and this shelf is for chests. We need function in this area. So far, it looks good. Maybe the chest will actually downgrade that a little bit, honestly, but function. We need this area to actually work as a house. So if we put chests up here, then it actually does work as a house. We can actually store things. Storage in Minecraft is big important. Now this won't be our main storage area, but this will be some storage. See, now we have this whole area over here. We can put things away when we need to, and we can sleep whenever we need to. So far, so good, but it's missing our other workstation, the big one that we need, the stone cutter. We're also going to want to move this uh, cartography table inside. We could definitely work the cartography table into that room somehow. How are we going to do it well check this out we take the floor out right there we put the cartography available there and then it almost looks like we have magazines sitting on the floor very messy probably dangerous could slip but it works the cartography table blends in perfectly magazines on the floor by the big couch bench now the stone cutter stone cutter very dangerous don't want to step on the stone cutter for sure what we could do is actually maybe put the stone cutter on the wall and then actually, maybe I uh, get some dark oak trap doors. I don't have any more. And maybe make a table for the stone cutter right there. That keeps things nice and compact and out of the way. Nice and safe. Stone cutter, crafting table. Easy. We need light though. So we're going to put a block right there. Then we're going to put the chain right there and the lantern right there. That's going to light up this whole area. But the lantern does kind of hang a little bit low. So you know what? We're actually just going to take the chain out and hang the lantern up there. I don't really want it hanging down in front of my face. Our light level is, ooh, we have an eight right there. We did have an eight. So we're going to go ahead and come in with maybe another lantern hanging, hanging right there. That's fine. That's a good spot for it. And then finally, just to be safe, is the, is it good in here? 10, 8, okay, we have another one right there. We're going to need to put one on in here somewhere. Maybe what we could do is right here. We'll make a shelf especially for the lantern. Boom, lantern shelf, perfect. So you know what? We could actually open that up and have room for like a flower pot right there. That might actually be really nice. Now this room is admittedly going to be a whole lot more plain for now. Like I said, I'm thinking an enchanting setup in there, so I don't really want to mess with it too much. I'm going to leave that room entirely unfinished for the enchanting setup. Once we put it in, we'll detail it because enchanting setups are just detailed looking. They have bookcases and enchanting tables, you know, so it'll look good no matter what. So we'll just kind of leave it alone like that for now. And then, honestly, with this room... Ah, uh, well, you know what? We might as well knock it out. We could easily make the walls continue down a little bit more. So then, inside of this room, we now have something that looks like this. It's mostly good. It just needs a little bit more cobblestone. So let's pull all of this out so we have a cobblestone base around here. Other than that one, that one's gonna have to stay. It is what it is. That's fine. Not that big of a deal. We'll have the ladder there anyways. And boom. Now we have a pretty solid storage room. I can fill this up with chests whenever I have more wood. I just don't have that much wood right now. I'll do that in between episodes. Next time we come back, we'll have a full storage room in there. It'll be perfect. So this is good for now. The room up there is good for now too. We could probably just take that out. We don't need the torch. Torches are ugly. Now, finally, we need to worry about this small space in here. It needs a little bit more work. And then the balcony. The balcony area, easy. For starters, we need some kind of uh, railing. This is a little dangerous. So if we put some fences in here, not on top of the torch, like that then we have a railing this balcony is definitely a whole lot more safe now up here we have this interesting window let's go ahead and put a fence right there to keep that nice and open i feel like that's kind of cool looking it also switches it up from all of these normal black stained glass windows couple fun facts for you if you use bone meal on these two tall flowers you get more two tall flowers you can then take those two tall flowers turn them into dye and then actually use that dye to dye wool we want red rugs inside of this house because we have a red couch i want things to actually match Anyways, back to the porch. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a chain right there. We're going to put a lantern right there to light the porch up insanely well. Then we're going to put a stair right there. That stair is my chair. I sit on this porch sometimes and stare like that. Not actually, but we could. If we wanted to, it would work. There we go. We make the chair a little bit better. It's a little tight, yes, but does it matter? No, because it's a porch, and honestly, I probably won't go on to it very much. Now, back to the inside. To finish things off, we need a rug in here. What I'm thinking, rug right there maybe is that too much no no that's new not too much at all that's good that's perfect oh no i can't believe i almost forgot about this uh we have to rewind really quick just really really quick and talk about the kitchen for one more second so the kitchen we have that smoker it looks good but we could make it look even better by putting this on top right here boom now we have like a stove top that looks pretty good we're actually gonna put the stove tops over there too see it's hot it's dangerous don't stand on it nice uh, <laughs> okay anyways uh finishing up the build 
Pots are amazing for decoration. We're gonna go ahead and make two of them and grab some flowers. I like these red uh, roses, tulips, I, uh, tulips. I like the red tulips. We'll put a flower pot right there and then we'll put a tulip inside of it because that looks good. And I need to come back in and actually put some plants on that little balcony right there too. I'll come around the outside of the building and do that. Finally, the last flower pot, maybe eventually we'll put it in this room. For now, I'll just set it right there. That could look nice in the enchanting setup room. But I think maybe aside from an item frame with a clock in it, like right there, that would look really good. That's actually going to do it for the interior of this build. That's how you do interiors, step by step, and then just sort of think about things. If you're working with a smaller space, honestly, honestly, you can get a little bit more fun. I always feel like smaller spaces are easier to detail because you can literally just use the Minecraft blocks. Like you set a stone cutter down, it looks good. You put this on the floor, that looks good. It's a detail. Over here, a crafting table, even a crafting table looks pretty good. So on small builds, detailing the interior, it's really not that bad at all. And honestly, I have so much fun doing it. Now, there is one more big thing that we need to get done today, and that is the outside of the build. I'm going to do things a little bit different because we've done a lot of building on camera. I'm actually going to stand here and then go ahead and detail the surrounding area. The build itself is fine, but the surroundings, definitely not. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We'll come back and talk about it. Three, two, one, be right back. We're back, and the outside of the build, it's done. It's been detailed. But before we check it out, I'd like to take out the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is from Scally. How do you know what to build next in your world? Right now, early game, how do I know what to build next in my world? Well, easy. What do I need next? So soon, I'm gonna wanna be enchanting, which means we're probably gonna need more leather and we're probably gonna need some sugar cane. That means it's time for probably some sort of better cow farm and some sort of sugar cane farm. So usually it comes down to this one simple question. What do I need next? But late game, if I have everything, then it really comes down to what do I feel like building? If I feel like building some sort of crazy gigantic farm, then that's what I feel like building and I'm gonna do that next. If I feel like building some sort of other random thing, then I build that sort of other random thing next. So two answers, early game, what do I need next? Late game, what do I want to do next? That's kind of how I figure it out. Now, the outside of the build. Like I said earlier, the area around your build is just as important as your build itself. Take a look at this build now that the surrounding area has been finished. Now, it's actually kind of still finishing. I'm waiting for the grass to spread into here and fill in. But yeah, for the most part, this area is pretty much set. Now, uh, another disclaimer, ignore the back surrounding area. It's gonna be hard to do because there's a lot of color, but like that area over there and the area way back there with a bunch of random flowers, that is just normal land still. I didn't mess with it at all. With the area around this house actually finished and detailed, the house itself, the build itself, looks a whole lot more complete and in my opinion, a whole lot better. So for starters, I swapped those staircases right there. They were cobblestone, now they're stone brick. Stone brick feels a lot more fancy. That matches the vibe of this house. I have a simple concrete powder path leading up to the house. The path kind of just ends right here because I don't know what else I want to do over here. Maybe I'll build a dock, maybe I'll build a barn, maybe uh, another farm, I don't know really. So for now, the path just kind of ends there. Now over here, at the farming area, I made this path come down a little bit more and I have a step up. Pay attention to detail when you're using path blocks. If you have a step up with like, uh, say in our case, oak slabs, put oak slabs down below the block too so it looks complete. Otherwise, you're gonna have random dirt and it will look incomplete. Now over here, I have a lot of white flowers. And then over here, I have a lot of red flowers. Around the spawn, I have purple flowers. What am I talking about the flowers for? Well, they're a huge part of your detailing process. Over there, bunch of random flowers. It looks really, really natural, but also really, really messy. Not good. Over here, I stuck to a couple flower colors in certain areas. So like I said, white over there, then red over here around the house, and then purple ones around the pond. I feel like that looks good. If you pick a handful of flower colors and stick to them, your build will look a whole lot better. If you pick a bunch of random flower colors and put them everywhere, like yellow, red, and purple, and maybe even white too, then it's going to look really random, really natural, overgrown. Over here, I put a couple barrels underneath the porch. I feel like that adds a little bit more detail to this house. It almost looks like this is some kind of extra storage area. Nothing inside of the barrels right now. Maybe, uh, big maybe, I'll move all of the flowers into the barrels because honest, oh, creeper, oh, creeper, oh, creeper. The creeper ruined the beehive. I'm sorry, bees, and beautiful terraforming. <laughs> I gotta fix that one up. Uh, that's for sure. Anyways, I'm gonna put the flowers over here, and I'm sorry, bees. I'm very sad about the bees. Wow, that is tragic. Okay. Um, hold on. 
We gather here today to honor the legacy of three wonderful bees. Because of these bees, we were able to use beautiful honeycomb blocks in our build today. These bees meant the world to me. Believe me, we can replace these bees, and we will, but it won't be the same. Taken too soon, way too quickly, accidentally. They'll be remembered here forever. I feel like that was a sign. We should probably make that craft will be home soon. Anyways, I have lots of coarse dirt on the ground. Coarse dirt is great for detailing in this pond. The shape has been changed heavily. The pond was way too close to the entrance door. Now it's still pretty close, but I think it looks a lot better. When detailing a pond, try using lily pads. A couple flowers look great. Sugarcane looks really nice and bone mealing under the water helps too. I didn't do that, but it's a good idea. Coarse dirt looks great on land and under the water. It's amazing. Also, don't forget about leaf blocks. They're great for bushes, but that's going to do it for Minecraft Guide episode number seven now the unluckiest episode of this entire series i'm sorry for that tragedy please smash like still subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode today big shout out to my patrons mr pd wash malin 312 and respect the kitty thank you all so much for the support stay fresh goodbye elites